25 Secrets About Aladdin's Genie Hello viewers! How are you? Welcome to Nibir Network. Today we will discuss 25 secrets only huge Disney fans know about the genie. Feel free to check all of the other videos I have made about Aladdin. Though it's been over two decades since we first met him, the genie remains one of Disney's most beloved characters. The big, blue guy first hit cinema screens back in 1993 as the animation powerhouse was just coming out of its dark age. Aladdin wound up being the highest grossing movie of that year, pulling in an impressive $504 million worldwide, garnered widespread critical acclaim and two Academy Awards, ushering in a new golden era of Disney classics. As well as its award-winning soundtrack, Aladdin's characters, the plucky vagabond turned Prince Aladdin, independent heroine, Jasmine, and the motormouth genie are at the heart of its continuing appeal. Voiced by legendary comedian actor, Robin Williams, the genie is based on the Arabic jinn, mythological beings that are part physical and part spiritual, and famous in fiction for their wish-granting abilities. Robin Williams' version is famous for his top-heavy, blue body, his stream-of-consciousness manner of speaking and being Aladdin's closest ally and friend apart from Abu. With the genie's help, Aladdin goes from street rat to royal heartthrob, though, ultimately he learns that just being yourself isn't so bad. You may have watched Aladdin and its sequels thousands of times since you were a kid, but there's still a lot that you might not know, or ever realized, about the big blue guy in the lamp. Number 1. He knows he's in a cartoon. These days, with the likes of Deadpool and Rick and Morty's Rick Sanchez winking and nodding at the camera on a regular basis, mainstream audiences have gotten quite used to the idea of fictional characters breaking the fourth wall. It's easy to forget, though, that back in the early 90s, the genie was one of the most famous users of these powers too. For one thing, he has knowledge of the wider Disney universe. In the first film, he not only morphs into Steamboat Willie, but, he also dons a goofy hat before heading off on vacation at the film's end. As well as that, his constant references to pop culture, like that infamous Jack Nicholson impression, means he clearly has medium awareness. At one point, he even offers Aladdin a script to read his lines from when the hero fails to finish a sentence. Number 2. He was written for Robin Williams. It's not unusual for script writers to craft a part around a certain actor and that's exactly the case for the genie. We wrote the script with Robin Williams in mind, director and producer John Musker told The Baltimore Sun in 1992. And since the casting really affects the way a character looks, the drawing of the genie was obviously tailored to Robin Williams' performance. The genie's role was originally a much smaller one, but, thanks to Williams' considerable improved skills, Disney ended up with a lot more bang for its buck. When we recorded Robin we just let him loose and encouraged him to improvise, Musker said. He was so hilarious we were rolling on the floor in the control room. Then later on we'd have to try and boil it down to all his funniest stuff, which was hard. Number 3. The Genie's Secret Identity One of the Genie's most used powers is his shape-shifting ability. He can effortlessly change his age, gender, size, clothing, or species for whatever a situation requires. Or, just pull out an impression of Broadway star, Carol Channing, and perplex everyone around him. An alternate ending for Aladdin reveals that the genie may have used this power in a sneakier way. This unused footage showed the narrator of the film otherwise known as the Peddler, who belts out Arabian Nights at the start of the film transforming into his true form, the genie. Both characters were voiced by Robin Williams, have the same facial hair and are the only characters in the film to have just four fingers. Though previously just a rumor, his dual identity was finally confirmed by the film's makers in 2015. Number 4. He's appeared outside of Aladdin. Easter eggs have become such a well-known part of popular media, stories like Ready Player One, have crafted entire narratives around the concept. As previously mentioned, the genie's goofy cap and Steamboat Willie transformation in Aladdin definitely qualify as early examples of this in a Disney movie, and years later, genie received a shout-out of his own from another. Well, 
more specifically his old lamp did in 2010's The Princess and the Frog, along with King Triton and Prince Charming. The genie has also had a cameo outside of the Disney domain. He showed up in all his blue and floating glory in the Simpsons episode My Pods and Boomsticks. As he was also voiced by Dan Castellnata, who took over from Robin Williams in Aladdin 2, we can totally call this appearance an official one. Number 5. Robin Williams Fell Out With Disney The story of Robin Williams' soured relationship with Disney after Aladdin is the stuff of Hollywood legend now. The genie was written with the comedy star in mind, but it was still intended to be a much smaller part, than what we ended up with. As mentioned earlier, the genie's expanded part in the movie was thanks to Williams getting carried away in the recording booth. Williams also had a lead role in the film Toys, which was scheduled to come out in the same year as Aladdin, and he wanted to avoid his part in Aladdin becoming top billing for fear that Toys would be overshadowed, so he requested that the genie only take up 25% of Aladdin's poster. After struggling to keep the genie's part as small as planned, Disney went against Williams' wishes, beginning a years-long feud between the studio and the star. Number 6. The genie is stupidly overpowered. The genie is characterized as something of a trickster character, like Bugs Bunny or Loki before him. As such, he's packing some serious cosmic powers that allow him to not only break the laws of physics and nature, but reality itself. It's easy to overlook this because much of his godly abilities are used for musical and comedy purposes. But, once you list what the genie is capable of, his magical arsenal is ridiculously strong. He can create seemingly infinite copies of himself, travel in time and space, heal himself and others, warp reality and resurrect the dead. Sure, he tells us that it's not a pretty picture and he doesn't like doing it, but how else would he know that unless he's done it before? Really, the only thing holding him back are those rules. Number 7. He's not the most powerful Aladdin character. As stupidly overpowered as the genie is, he's, surprisingly, not the most powerful character in the world of Aladdin. That honor belongs to a certain Alice in Wonderland-inspired grinning cat from the Aladdin cartoon series. The mischievous winged feline is known only as Chaos, which he's thought to be the living embodiment of. Think of all the powers that the genie possesses, resurrection, reality manipulation, interdimensional awareness, etc. and then consider what the genie tells us of chaos abilities, he has more power in his little whisker than a whole palace full of genies. Chaos can not only manipulate reality but rewrite it entirely. His magic also includes telepathy, necromancy and creating new life out of nothing. Really, his only limit is his own creativity. Number 8. Robin Williams was underpaid. Another sore point between Robin Williams and Disney was his salary. By the early 90s when Aladdin was in production, the actor was coming fresh off of his Oscar-nominated lead role in Dead Poets Society in 1989 for Disney's Touchstone Studios. He was a proven bankable star and could comfortably negotiate a salary in the millions. At that point in time, voice acting wasn't particularly well paid, even for celebrities like Williams. Because of his desire for a limited involvement in the picture, Williams accepted a low-scaled rate of $70,000. So, it's understandable, when the genie ended up getting considerably more screen and marketing time than previously agreed upon, why Williams felt screwed over. The only reason Mickey Mouse has three fingers is because he can't pick up the check, he bemoaned at the time. Number 9. He has no name. Here's something you've probably never thought about, what is the genie's name? Because, if it really is just genie, that's kind of like naming your cat, cat. The fact is, he has no name. He's introduced as the genie, but that's really like introducing yourself by your job description or the name of your own species. It's something we haven't seen in a Disney character since the evil queen in Snow White. But, this is actually sort of character building. After all, the genie is a typically tragic comic character, using humor to deflect from his obvious misery about his own lonely life of servitude. 
One fan theory offers the solution that the genie did have a name once but after thousands of years alone in the lamp, he's just forgotten what it is. Number 10. Genie Hunters Exist The Aladdin TV series ran for just three seasons between 1994 to 1995 but it delved into a lot of lore in the Aladdin world, including expanding upon the mythology around genies in the Disney universe. With a life as long as our genies, it's not surprising that he's made some enemies along the way. The episode Genie Hunt revealed that one of the genie's former masters, Ajd al set a bounty hunter on the genie's trail to try and re-enslave the blue being. The sinister reptilian hunter spoke in a hissed voice and had no real name referred to only by the name of his race, Mukhtar. He is thought to be inspired by Star Wars Boba Fett. After being employed by Mozenrat, the series' junior Jafar, who wanted to steal the genie's powers, the mysterious figure wound up becoming an ally to Aladdin and his friends. Number 11. Robin Williams refused to reprise his role. There was a lot of bitterness built up between Robin Williams and Disney after the actor felt cheated out of a paycheck that was fairly representative of his contribution to the first Aladdin movie. This wasn't helped by the studio also brushing aside his request that the genie take up only a quarter of the space of the film's posters, so as not to make it look like he had a starring role. So strong was Williams' animosity towards the company that he refused to come back for the film's sequel, The Return of Jafar or lend his voice to Aladdin merchandise and other related media. Instead, Simpsons actor Dan Castellnata took over the part, and the genie's characterization became a lot goofier and lighter. Number 12. He becomes hugely depowered. In the first Aladdin film, the genie could easily be one of the most powerful beings in all of Disney, even more so than the likes of Hercules' Greek gods. The only thing holding his phenomenal powers in check was his enslavement, as well as his own sense of decency. After Aladdin frees the genie, he's off his cosmic leash, which is great for him, but presented a problem for future stories. The problem with godlike beings is they can too easily become deus ex machina devices, hence why restraints like the genie's rules are necessary. The writers nip this problem in the bud, for the sequel films and TV series, by having the genie explain that, his magic had been downgraded to the semi-phenomenal, nearly cosmic level, which is why, Jafar was easily able to defeat him, in later installments. Number 13. He's the only tune. Toon Physics describes the hyperactive movements that animators like Tex Avery brought classic Looney Tunes characters to life within animation's golden age. If a cartoon character accidentally walks off of a cliff, stops mid-air as they realize what they've done and then plummets to the ground leaving a part of their body suspended in the air, that's Toon Physics. It's not so much that the genie's manic shape-shifting and zipping around the place are unusual in animated movies today as much as he's the only one doing it in Aladdin. The other human characters move in a relatively realistic way, highlighting just how otherworldly genie is. It's still odd how little recognition Aladdin and Jasmine have of his unique behavior though. Number 14. Disney bribed Robin Williams back. Until Aladdin, Disney, and Robin Williams' burgeoning partnership had been going well. By 1993 when the animated movie was released, Williams had starred into two films for Touchstone Studios, one of Disney's distributors, 1988's Good Morning Vietnam and the Oscar-nominated Dead Poets Society in 1989. By signing him up for Aladdin, Disney tried to put a ring on it. After their messy, non-mutual breakup following the dispute over William's pay and overinflated role in the film, the studio was keen to win him back. New studio head Joe Roth went on the charm offensive, offering Williams extravagant gifts like a million-dollar Pablo Picasso painting, and a public apology. The studio's efforts were finally rewarded when Williams took the titular part in Mrs. Doubtfire and reprised his genie role for Aladdin 3 in 1996. Number 15. He's a composite character. As well as secretly doubling up as Aladdin's narrator character, the genie has a dual identity when it comes to representing the source material. Like most Disney animated movies, Aladdin was adapted from folklore, this one being part of the Middle Eastern-inspired anthology, The Book of 1001 Nights, or, Arabian Nights, 
from the 1700s. Most of the literary retellings broadly match the Disney version a poor peasant boy called Aladdin is tricked by a duplicitous sorcerer to retrieve a lamp from a cave, where the sorcerer entraps him. Where they differ is that the original myth actually has two genies, one that appears from a magic ring and another, more powerful one, from the lamp. Disney's genie is really two in one, and the ring was substituted for the magic carpet. Number 16. He's Goofy but not stupid. We love the genie because he's a classic Disney goofball. In a movie with a wise talking thief, a literal cheeky monkey and a mischievous, enchanted carpet, you'd think there wouldn't be much room left for any more comic relief. And yet, thanks to Robin Williams' comedic tour de force of a performance, we can't imagine Aladdin without genie. But, don't let his fondness for celebrity impersonations and drag fool you. The genie isn't exactly an airhead. Thanks to his ability to break the fourth wall and awareness of other dimensions, he's one of the most knowledgeable Disney characters, as well as one of the universe's greatest magicians, able to perform virtually any spell or trick he wants to with a mere snap of his fingers. Sure, he falls for Jaffer's schemes easily, but maybe that's because he's too trusting. Number 17. He keeps his slave bracelets. Despite all of his incredible powers, the genie is a slave to the binding magic of his itty-bitty living space. When Aladdin promises to save one of his limited wishes to free the genie from his mystical servitude, the genie is grateful for the sentiment but doubtful that Aladdin will make good on his word. He's been burnt before. Luckily, Aladdin becomes the first of the genie's masters to live up to his selfless promise. As he wishes the genie free, the bracelets around Genie's wrists shatter, visual confirmation that he can hang up his wish-granting career. That's why it's confusing when, in future series installments, the bracelets are back on. Is this a big continuity error? Not according to the Genie, the only thing I'm a slave to now is fashion. Number 18. Yago once had his powers. Apparently the genie's magical powers are not only godly but also easily transferable. And, as well as Jafar for a brief and horrifying time, he's handed them to Yago for a day. Given that Yago is clearly chaotic neutral, this was arguably an even worse idea than an evil maniac like Jafar possessing them. The transference happened in the Aladdin cartoon series in the episode, Power to the Parrot. After Yago makes the smart-mouthed critique to the genie that anyone could wield his powers and do better, the jinn decides to put Yago's boast to the test. To his credit, Yago uses his new skills for good, creating a much-needed river for a grubba. Unfortunately, the parrot goes overboard and the city floods. He also gives Abu a literal golden touch, inadvertently cursing the monkey to be unable to eat anything. Number 19. His Applause Sign is for us. In the genie's big, introductory number, Friend Like Me, he pulls out all of the Broadway stops imaginable to woo his new master, fireworks, chorus lines, dancing girls, circus animals, the works. At the climax, he conjures an illuminated sign reading, applause, that we assume is for his audience in the film, which it absolutely, totally is but the gag was actually designed for the audience watching the actual movie. This fact was confirmed by producer Ron Clements during a promotional event for the film's Diamond re-release in 2015. When then Disney chief Jeff Katzenberg said he wanted the movie to have a moment that would make audiences applaud, the animators cheekily took his instructions literally, adding to the raucous spirit of the film. Number 20. Unlimited Wishes as well as his lamp-shaped prison, the genie's obscene power is curtailed by a set of rules, his code of conduct, if you will. 1. He can't make people fall in love, 2. He can't kill anyone, 3. He can't bring people back from the dead, and 4. No wishing for more wishes. 3 is your lot, that doesn't mean to say he can't do the first three, just that he won't. In the original tale, there were no such restrictions on a genie's powers or wish-giving number, implying the latter to be limited only by a genie's own power. Earlier versions of the Disney adaptation incorporated this aspect as well, before deciding, rightly, 
fact that the genie needed limits for the sake of the story. The number of wishes likely comes from the age-old belief that three is a magic number. Number 21. He has a love interest. The genie may be an immortal god-like being, but even he gets lonely, very lonely after 10,000 years of magical incarceration. He and Rita Repulsa would have a lot to talk about. His flamboyant personality and penchant for gender bending might lead to you wonder if he, romantically, leans a certain way. Or, being a non-human, floaty entity, that he doesn't lean any way. The answer actually lies in the Aladdin TV series. In Some Enchanted Genie we meet Eden, a green-skinned female genie, who is tied to a bottle instead of a lamp. Genie falls for her straight away and whisks her off on an intergalactic rollerblading date around Saturn. Unsurprisingly, Eden is impressed. So impressed, in fact, that the pair end up living together by the end of the episode. Number 22. He almost had his own movie. Would you pay money to go and see an Aladdin spin-off movie starring the genie? Well, for a hot minute Disney were hoping that the answer to that question was yes as well as rolling out plans to bring a live-action version of Aladdin to cinema screens, the studio promised that a live-action Genie origin prequel was also in the works in 2015. The project was titled Genies and would have told the tale of how our favorite wish-granting Jin ended up forgotten in a lamp deep in the Cave of Wonders. But, no sooner was it announced, the studio was forced to shelve the idea because of provisions in Robin Williams' will that his image or voice, including his hours of Aladdin outtakes, not be used for 25 years, a measure designed to protect his family from tax liabilities incurred on posthumous earnings. Number 23. He won't kill, but that doesn't mean he can't. Genie's rules on killing and resurrection are clear, he won't do either under any circumstances. In regards to the latter, he also treats Aladdin to a gruesome impression of a slimy corpse to prove how much of a bad idea it is. The implication is that he won't tamper with the natural order of things, but not that he can't. Once he's been freed by Aladdin, his powers are significantly downgraded. This is just as well because, given how emotionally volatile he is, it's worryingly unclear, whether being liberated from these restrictions, means that he couldn't commit accidental homicide with a snap of his fingers. His genie girlfriend in the animated series, operates under the same rules, turning Aladdin and genie into cockroaches, when her master orders her to kill them. Is this an ethics issue or a cosmically binding one? We might never know. Number 24. He has three weird weaknesses. We all know that the only thing holding the genie back, as well as quite literally holding him back for 10,000 years is, the lamp. This is a standard mythological thing for Jin and it doesn't always have to be a lamp. In the original folklore tale that Aladdin was based on, the plucky street rat rubs a genie from a magic ring, and Eden, genie's TV love interest, is tied to a magic bottle. But, did you know the genie has two other known weaknesses? Weirdly enough, it's not just lamp-shaped containers he can be stuffed into, it's actually any sealed jar, box, or lidded object. As long as it's sealed tightly enough, he can't get out. Guava juice also has a curious effect on him. It makes him lose control of his magic powers, which if you remember how ridiculously powerful they are is a terrifying prospect. Number 25. The Genie Changed Animated Movies Forever. The genie is not only one of the most iconic Disney characters, he also had a huge effect on Western animated movies that you might not have noticed. As we previously covered, voice acting was not a particularly well-paid or celebrated job at the time of Aladdin's release, and, arguably still isn't if you consider there's still no Academy recognition for it. A celebrity like Robin Williams was big big catch for Disney in 1993. It also proved to be a big box office draw, as Aladdin was not only the highest grossing movie of that year, but has gone on to sell millions of home release copies. The animation industry quickly realized that star power could be just as effective for cartoons as it is for live action features. Today, marketing for animated movies makes sure that famous voice acting talent gets top billing. Thanks for watching. 
feel free to check all the other videos I have made about Aladdin. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button below and please don't forget to share with your friends.